Hey guys, what's up and welcome back to Two Toe Tags Metal Reviews and today we're giving you guys our first impressions of the brand new album from Opeth titled In Cauda Venenum. So, this is going to be really interesting because we've covered Opeth on this channel before. I got Vile Cell into this band, or at least got him introduced to this band through Ghost Reveries previously, yep. and uh, if I recall correctly, you enjoyed it, generally. I enjoyed it quite a lot. It did not get my toe tag, though. But it was, it was close. It was very close. I think it got a 7. Maybe a 7.5. Like, it was on the doorstep. So, you know, you've already got a good impression of this band already. Now, I'm sure you know the band changed a lot since an album like that one. You know, yep. no more growls. They're a lot more kind of like the progressive rock alley, and they've been like that for a few albums now since 2011's Heritage. And uh, this album, I listened to the two singles that came out from this album, and they blew my fucking mind. Like, I, I love Opeth, I love their entire discography, they make tons of great stuff, and the two al like singles from this album just, like, I was loving them. So I'm really excited to get into it. I'm sure... I'm eager to get into it too. Like, I, don't, I don't really know what to expect fully, like, I kind of have an idea of what to go in, what I'm going, getting into. But it's more of a surprise for me than anything. Yeah. So he's going in with, uh, I guess, a little bit blind eyes here. But anyway, we're going to go listen to Encada Venenum for the very first time in its entirety. And we'll be right back to give you guys our first impressions. So stay tuned. All right, so we just listened to Encada Venenum for the very first time in its entirety. Vile, how do you feel? I didn't like it. All right. <laughs> I, I, I was I was thoroughly bored of this entire album. It has some moments where it's kind of like, yeah, this is pretty cool. Uh, there's not a lot of technicality there, which is nice to listen to and appreciate. But the arrangements of the songs, the tone of the songs, the tempo of the songs, I found we're all very snooze inducing. Now, the upside to this is that it is just a first impression. And prog is one of those genres, not just this band or this album, or whatever, but prog is a genre and as a whole. For me personally, it's something that takes a few listens to really get into and really start to jive with and things like that. So don't take anything I say in this video as like my final opinion. That's what a first impression is for. Um, the highlights for me were the singles, Dignity and Heart and Hand. Those are my highest rated songs. I understand why those were singles. Those are the songs that are gonna draw the people in the most. I felt like they had the most going for them in terms of action and variety. I thought those songs just spoke to me the most. Um, but as far as the rest of the album goes, it was way more missed than hit for me. Um, but it's like, even though I was not enjoying it that much, the things that were there were still nice, if, that, if I can put it that way. Um, for example, like, um, do, 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 um, I can't, okay, so let's say Love, Lauren Crime, song number five. Um, very soft intro with the piano and the vocals. Not really my thing, but it still sounded very nice. So I can appreciate that. Actually, the piano throughout the album was actually pretty nice. Some very nice piano work on the album. Um, again, it just softened the entire sound. And maybe that's obviously what they're going for. Does it tickle my fancy? Not quite. Maybe after I listen to it a few times, it'll grow on me. Very, very possible. Um, yeah, you know what, I don't know, it's just, I, I can talk about a little few things sprinkled in here and there. Drum things here and there, uh, Continuum. It starts off with that drum intro. Um, it has that drum beat that, that goes on for the first few bars. And then it's kind of a snooze fest for about three and a half minutes. And I kind of found throughout my notes, I'm looking at my notes here, I'm finding three and a half minutes seems to be the point in each song where it either picks up and goes and goes and gets good, or it stops being good and goes crappy for a while. But the three and a half minute mark seems to be a very common point to transition from one style to the next. 
in terms of their musical flow, which I thought was interesting that that was almost a consistent thing I was noticing. I haven't noticed that with any other band or any other album before. So that was kind of cool actually, that that was consistent in that sense. And I think part of that is also due to the length. Like a lot of the songs are at least around seven minutes-ish. Yeah, which again, that's something that, I mean, they are what they are, but there's some songs, like what was the song? There was a song that played for about, again, three and a half minutes, then it kind of stopped, and then it kicked in and it felt like a completely different song, and I even made a comment like, they might as well have just made two songs. Oh, that might have been Universal Truth, maybe? Maybe. Um, yeah, it was Universal Truth. I have a note here about it. <laughs> song ends at 3.30. But nope, just kidding. It just changed it to a completely different song, and stays, but it stays as the same track. <laughs> That's what my note says. Uh, my notes on that one, yeah, it's still, uh, song feels like it's over part way through, like straight up, feels like it ends, and it was good, it was chill, groovy, uh, feels like a different song, but I like it, uh, it kind of is like the beginning and it goes harder near the end, that song was really back and forth. This album is, was good, like on my first impression, I generally enjoyed it, but I still found some issues, and I think one of them is that, at some points, it really dragged. Like, yeah. I feel like a lot of these songs could have been a bit shorter because it had, like, there's a lot in these songs. There's a lot of content. The structure of the songs honestly makes it feel like there's so much that happened and then, like, only two minutes has passed by. Mm -hmm. But it gets to the point in some of the songs where they're kind of just going on this one rip for at least, like, three minutes at the end and they can totally shave off a bunch of that, I feel. Yeah. Like, there's some points where it's like you've heard as much as you've heard in the song, you're at the end but the end lasts for a while and it's just one thing over and over. Like, you guys can end the song a lot earlier than that and make yep. it a lot more concise that way. The structures were interesting because if you look at a song like Dignity, that was quote unquote all over the place. Like, there was a yep. lot of stuff happening, lots of different stuff packed in there. I thought it was a great song. It was one of my higher rated tracks, mm -hmm. but a song like Heart and Hand was a lot simpler structured it and it's still a great song. That's yep. one of my highest rated tracks. It's a tie between that and Charlatan, which is track number six. That song was one of the heaviest songs on this album. Yeah. It was like dirty sounding, lots of syncopation, lots of dissonance. Honestly, it was reminding me a lot of something they would do from Watershed, which is the last album they did with any harsh vocals. That album to me had a lot of really just kind of eerie, uncomfortable sounding dissonance to it. And I got those vibes from this song and I found that really interesting. That song had the best drum work on it too, I would say. Yeah, it was. Lots of fills, rolls, licks. The beats, everything about the drums were standing out. For me. Yeah, definitely good there. And one thing I really liked is that a lot of the instruments are playing different things together. Mm -hmm. Like they're they're having a musical conversation. Whereas there was another song, which one was it? There was one. Yeah, it was next of kin, which is track number four. Everyone was playing the same thing at one point. Like melody wise, you got Michael Michael Ackerfeld's voice, guitars, bass, like all of that, and the string synth, etc. All playing the same melody of the exam at the same time in unison. Mm -hmm. I wasn't a huge fan of that because it felt like there was too much packed into one line of yeah. music. Whereas in Charlatan, you have everyone doing stuff that complements each other and it feels a lot better and more comfortable that way. Yeah. So I don't know if I was a huge fan of all that condensed. I will say one of the biggest highlights of this album is Michael Ackerfeld's performance. Wow, he did a great job with this album, I can say already. Like there's so much emotion in his voice, there's so much dynamics, he really just goes everywhere with it. Like he takes it in so many different directions. Yep. You know, musically, emotionally, I found it really impressive. And I noticed that in the two singles, like when they were singles and I was listening to those. So there's a lot more of that throughout the album. So I, I really like that, like he did a fantastic job. Yeah, to add a point to that, we um, just so you guys are aware, we did listen to the English version of the album, basically because we wanted the, the song titles yeah. in English. But me personally, I'm going to download this the uh, Swedish version and listen to that throughout the week as my um, when I, while I review the album. Yeah, I don't really need to know or care to know the English lyrics, and I'd rather hear the natural Swedish voice because this is a Swedish band. Yeah, so, that is really cool that they did two versions of this album, one in English and one in Swedish. Yeah. So it's really cool that Michael Ackerfeld, he performed this album twice. Yeah. Two different languages, like props for that. And I am looking forward to listening to the Swedish version as well. Yeah. See how it differs vocally, because... If, if it differs. If it differs, yeah, who knows? Yeah. Maybe he's just that consistent. Like, yeah. we don't know. We haven't heard that yet. But, yeah, overall, it's an interesting album. Like... There's a lot that happens. There's a lot going on. One thing I want to mention is the Garreter. That's track number eight. This song is literally a swing. And that was one of the last yeah. things I was expecting. Like right when the guy starts swinging on the drums, I'm like, 
What? Well, it starts off with like, I don't even, I, I got like a Spanish mariachi kind of vibe. With it. Or, maybe, or maybe it was like an old Western kind of thing. I wasn't sure how to really pinpoint it, but it was definitely an odd type of sound that they were going for. And then the guy starts going, I'm like, you know what? Like the way that the drums sound, I think he's using brushes on them as well and how like loose they feel. Even though the song's in six, the sound of it's reminding me of Take Five by Dave Brubeck. Like honestly, like I can hear da 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 over these drums, even though the time signatures are different, obviously. But I don't know. I kind of it's weird how I got that vibe from it. But you know, it's not often you really hear swing like that, like straight up in yeah. a genre like this. Yeah, I also found that as far as the album goes, that song was one of the most consistent rhythmically. Where the yeah. rest of them were were very syncopated, as you said. Um, you know, polyrhythms here and there. Um, but that one just had more of a consistent rhythm throughout, which, yeah. was, which was cool. This is also something in Take 5, very consistent that way, so yeah. there you go. But uh, yeah, this album has a lot to it, and I think throughout the week we're really going to notice a lot of different stuff as we listen. Like, yeah. I could totally see this album growing for you. I know you don't like it now, but I, I could totally see this being one of those albums where you start picking points yep. in certain songs I out. I feel like that's going to happen. Yeah, and I mean, it happens with all the albums you review, honestly, like, yeah. what, that's why we do what we do, you know? Anyway, so we're going to do that, we're going to listen to this album all week, constantly, English, Swedish, Swinglish, Edlish, whatever it is, any of it, all of it, throughout the week, and we're going to be back next week to give you guys our final review of Incada Venenum. So that's all we got for you guys today, remember to like the video if you like it, subscribe, comment below, tell us what you thought of this album, what are your first impressions, I'm TV Fish, I'm Vile Self, and we'll see you guys later.